Doing the right thing against Arsenal on the opening day was Coventry striker Mickey Quinn. A three-goal victory for Coventry at Highbury, all from Quinn, breaking Arsenal's normally resolute defence. Quinn had bet money on himself to score 30 goals in the season. He wouldn't achieve this target, and despite the efforts of Wright for Arsenal, goal scoring would again prove to be their Achilles heel. He's onside. And that is a very disappointing effort. He would have bet upon himself to score there, you can be sure of that. Clear opening with just over a minute gone. And although it might have caught him by surprise initially, it was a disappointing shot by Quinn straight at Kareem. Did well. Donaghy. Hoddle. Wise. Well won by Clark. Chelsea prepared to be patient. Newton. Peacock took it beautifully. Good goal. Gavin Peacock's fourth goal for Chelsea. Gives them the lead with ten minutes of the first half remaining. And he is just so sharp. Coventry City nil, Chelsea won. And Coventry's unbeaten record under threat from Gavin Peacock. Had two rather unhappy years at Chelsea, Roy Wegley. This corner towards Williams. Donnie got his head to it, and again. It's there! Wise couldn't keep it off the line. And Steve Morgan has scored his first goal for Coventry. On for own love, a little fortunate. Sinclair got back. So pasty, Frank Sinclair, that Love didn't have any time to sit himself. Bab. In towards Quinn. Knocked down. Peter and Love here with another chance. Mick Quinn onside, saved by Karin once more. Goal kick. Well, you can see how frustrating it is for Quinn, who hasn't scored since the opening day of the season, that hat-trick at Highbury. Uh, what can he serve up for Chelsea in these last seven minutes? Break it towards Kilberg. Grzybic couldn't hold it. John Spencer trying to make something of it, cleared off the line by David Rennie. The last line of defence. And so very nearly a goal. Grzybic came and couldn't claim. John Spencer first to react. David Reddy, the sentry on patrol. Quinn. Now on love. On love! Oh! Well, that was worth coming to see just on its own. A magnificent goal by Peter on love. Twenty-one years of age, and still plenty of time to get even better. Thrashed past Sagers with terrific power and conviction, and from the moment that he got it, there was only one thing on his mind. For once he was isolated against one defender, and boy, did he make the most of it. be a wake-up call for Coventry City, who've had a sleepy afternoon thus far. Morgan. Far more urgency about Coventry since the goal. Morgan! Anything that love can do, maybe I can do. I set a little bit more confidence and conviction about the whole Coventry performance now. A bit of a have-a-go attitude has come over them. Five weeks without a win. Coventry finally remembered how to score after half an hour. Peter Unlove's bullet shot was parried by Gunn. Sean Flynn was there to tidy up.
John Dean's half-time team talk seemed to inspire his side. Right at the start of the second half, Norwich City equalised. 18-year-old Darren Eady's brave header beating Agrizovic. Like Coventry City's first goal, their winner was set up by the talented Peter Unlove. Unlove skipped past a couple of defenders, had the vision to pick out Mickey Quinn, and he scored a typical goal from close range. Coventry 2, Norwich 1. Rennie's first goal for Coventry was followed by Mick Quinn's first of the year. 75 minutes had gone when Alan Kernigan's clearance was charged down by Rennie. His cross was met by Quinn's diving header. That was greeted by a new line in salutes to celebrate the end of his barren spell. Two more followed in the last three minutes as Coventry notched their highest total of the season. John Williams, whose pace menaced the visitors' defence throughout, lashed home a splendid third, then he played Peter Unlove through for the fourth in injury time, thus inflicting on Manchester City their heaviest defeat of the season. They stay in deep trouble, third from bottom. Two sides for you. We've received them by remote control, and Coventry keep the side that scored an impressive 2-1 victory at Spurs on Saturday. The man of the match there was Chris Marston, whose move from Huddersfield should soon be made permanent. Mick Quinn, who's had a few injury problems lately, still can't force his way in, so John Williams and Roy Wegley playing up front. Yeah, Phil Neal will, I assume, keep the same formation that's been successful to him recently. And the one that was successful against Tottenham. And that's a 4-4-2 formation. Obviously, the threat and pace of John Williams will be there for all to see in the craft of Roy Wegerley. As for Swindon Town, they've conceded 10 goals over the holiday period. They do make a change, not in defence, though. Keith Scott, the £300,000 striker from Wigan Wanderers, drops to the subs bench. Paul Bowden comes back on the left of midfield. Craig Maskell will be playing as an out-and-out -out striker. Yeah, that's the only change. Uh, at the beginning of the season, Swindon Town would be three at the back, five defenders sort of if they wanted but I think John Gomez thinking about it now more or less a flat back four in I think some are being Bowden both wide on either side Paul Bowden he'll be delighted that he's back now in the starting lineup for goals already from that area and Andy Much as well has been scoring goals so that's a pretty confident looking Swindon side OK, limited coverage from Highfield Road. This won't be the best that we've produced for you, but we do have live football, which is really good news. It's Coventry City against Swindon Town. Our match commentators are Andy Gray and Ian Dark. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. 109 live games Sky Sports brought you in 1993. Here comes the first in rather unusual circumstances, as Richard's been explaining, of 1994. Coventry against Swindon Town. And say what you like about Swindon. They might have been bottom all season, but they've really produced some entertainment in this Premiership this season, Andy. Yes, they have. I think that, in all honesty, though, Ian, John Gorman has tinkered with the entertainment factor. He's wanted his team to become a bit more physical, a bit tougher to beat. And I think that's probably the reason why results are slowly turning for them. Be interesting to see Phil Neal's new look Coventry City as well. The word is that they're playing the passing game a wee bit more. And they were very impressive by all accounts at White Hart Lane against Spurs on Saturday. That's Craig Maskell, the number 11 for Swindon, who's about to kick off. He's had his problems this season, but he's in the side for the moment. And he got a couple at Sheffield Wednesday the other day in a 3-3 draw. Swindon have been putting up some more useful performances away from home. Remember, they nearly won at Liverpool. Big kick. Bouncing around dangerously. Hacked away gratefully in the end by Coventry. I think you can see there, any set piece they get, and they put one in there, they've got enough height to cause plenty of problems. That was Scott winning it. Scott got two in his first two games for Swindon Town. Coventry breaking. Oh, that's a good ball to find Wegerly. This is a real chance here for Coventry. Is this the breakthrough? Yes, it is. Roy Wegerly is the scorer. It's his third goal in the last four games. And Coventry City at last have the breakthrough. Oh, it's a magnificent goal. And I tell you what, Chris Marsden deserves a lot of credit. But when Wegerly gets in there, he's very emphatic. There's no doubt in his mind what he was going to do. The ball through is from Flynn. In goes Wegerly, and he drills it.
But what impressed me, when they won the ball on the edge of their own box, Marsden was so easily just a hat to upfield. But he kept his composure, he walked out the box, drove in between a couple of players and played a smashing ball to Flynn. And we saw the rest from there. It's a wonderful goal. Have Swindon got an answer to it? are so useless where Liam O'Brien's daisy cutter took a detour off the foot of defender Peter Atherton judging by last season the goal will be credited to O'Brien Newcastle's first back in the big time but the big moment in the game was the dismissal of their goalkeeper John Beresford's loose pass ushered Roy Wegley forward to win the penalty and though strictly speaking he was heading away from goal the spirit of the law demanded that Pavel Cernicek pay the ultimate price for his teammates lapse in concentration the red card was produced with eight minutes of the first half still remaining. Newcastle's goalkeeping substitute Tommy Wright made a hasty entrance in time to face the spot kick of dead-eyed Mickey Quinn. Not this time. Quinn said afterwards, at least I sent the keeper the wrong way. Coventry could afford to joke by the end of the night. A year ago, we were just learning how to wrap our tongs around the exotic name of Peter Unluff. His exotic talents are lighting up the start of the new season. A beautifully struck equaliser after 58 minutes. It was followed by a telling double substitution. On came recent signings Paul Williams and Mick Harford. Williams delivered the cross and Harford delivered the points with five minutes to spare. His knees may feel 34 years old, but Big Mick remains young at heart. If you haven't got the legs, you've got to have the brain to take you into certain positions on the pitch. And I always know Mike Harford will get there. If you deliver the quality crosses that he deserves and needs, you'll get your just rewards. And prior to that, we had a little fella called Unlovu. And please, please don't ever think of letting uh, foreign players not come into this country. Because without their ability, we have nobody uh, to teach our youngsters today. ...of entertainment too, and Newcastle had their first point, and Manchester United's 100% record has gone. Wimbledon 2, Aston Villa. which would drag nearer a relegation fight by Coventry. Sean Flynn fired home Coventry's opener, a goal that went straight to Flynn's head. Coventry's worrying spell of six defeats in seven matches was about to improve, as 11 minutes later they went two ahead. Peter Undlove revelling in his free roll today and slotting home his eighth goal of the season. More fitting finale to a wonderful career at Old Trafford than for Brian Robson, Captain Marvel, to lead out United for the last time with a second successive title already won. But it was the inheritor of his mantle as the fans' favourite, Eric Cantona, who provided the sparkle most fitting a celebratory occasion. Steve Grisovitz's goalkeeping typified Coventry's resolve not to be mere wallflowers at the party, and when he was beaten in the second half, the referee ruled that Dublin had handled. Indeed, Coventry themselves all but put a damper on proceedings as Derby's shot struck both post and bar. But in the end, the result scarcely mattered. 